The history of math is our intellectual foundation to understanding science. Science, beautiful, awesome, wonderful science. It's the creative foundation to our ineffable future. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Burchak, and this is my podcast, Math, Science, History. send out a special thank you to all of you who are listening to this podcast. It has been really exciting to see my listening audience grow, and I am really honored to have my podcast be part of your world. This podcast is made possible through my Audible affiliate account at audibletrial.com slash math science history, where you can go and receive a free audiobook download as well as a 30-day free trial. But this podcast is also sustained through your generous contributions, which I am so very grateful for. You too can visit me at mathsciencehistory.com. Click on that coffee cup on the right side of my website and buy me a cup of coffee or two or three or four because every cup of coffee that you buy keeps this podcast up and running. This podcast has been brought to you by Hair. I'm sure we're all struggling with trying to figure out how to get a haircut during these times, and so I couldn't resist in doing a podcast about a barber, a paradox, and George Cantor's definition of a set as, quote, any collection into a whole of definite and separate objects of our intuition or our thought, unquote. The puzzle originally was mentioned by Bertrand Russell, who was actually referring to Cantor's definition. So, for the record, Bertrand Russell never wanted to take credit for the barber puzzle. But I digress. The puzzle goes. In a certain town, there is a male barber who shaves all those men and only those men who do not shave themselves. The question is, does the barber shave himself? It's a paradox. The answer to this question results in a contradiction. Why? Well... If the barber shaves himself, then he's a member of the group of men who shave themselves. But no man in this group is shaved by the barber, so the barber does not shave himself. What if the barber does not shave himself? Then he belongs to the group of men who don't shave themselves. However, the barber shaves every man in this group, so the barber shaves himself. It's a loop. Or as Vinzini in Princess Bride says, it's inconceivable. <laughs> So how is this for dizzying? How can the answer be neither yes or no? I'm sure there are plenty of barbers who either do or do not shave themselves, but how can we make the paradox disappear? Maybe the barber doesn't have a beard and doesn't shave himself. But the condition of the puzzle is that the barber is a man who shaves all of those men who don't shave themselves. Since he doesn't shave, then he doesn't shave himself. In that case, he is shaved by the barber who happens to be himself. And so we have a contradiction. So... Let's just go with this idea that the paradox doesn't have a resolution and see where this goes. Since the barber neither shaves himself nor doesn't shave himself, the sentence, quote, the barber shaves himself, is neither true nor false. But the sentence is presented from an explanation of a situation. If the situation actually existed, then the sentence would have to be true or false. As a result, we have to conclude that the situation in the puzzle can't exist in the world as we know it. As a result, there is no answer. This is a problem that actually relies upon set theory to understand why it's presented and how to understand set theory. For those of you who are interested in learning more about this paradox, I will post some information on my website at mathsciencehistory.com and I will provide both implications of Russell's paradox set theory. What's interesting about this problem is that it's a contradiction that could actually go away and disappear by using other definitions, which leads me to the second reason why I wanted to do this podcast. If you're listening to this, on April 28th, it's Kurt Goodell's birthday. It was Kurt Goodell in 1931 who showed that it's really just not possible to prove in a mathematically rigorous way that mathematics is free of contradictions. That said, I'm going to go cut my hair. Wish me luck. Until next time, carpe diem.
I'm Gabrielle Burchak. This podcast has been brought to you by Caffeine, delicious, wonderful nectar of the gods caffeine. Coffee, tea, coffee, candy, you name it. I love it. Thank you for listening to Math Science History. If you like what you are listening to, please remember to subscribe and leave a review. I would really appreciate that. If you are interested in reading more about the history of math and science, please come visit me at mathsciencehistory.com. And while you are there, if you like what you're listening to, please feel free to click on that coffee button and buy me a cup of coffee. Until next week, carpe diem!